Hi, I wanted to quickly go through one of my go-to techniques. Um, this is one of the techniques that I use when photographing real estate that is quick, on-site. It doesn't require a lot of time. Unfortunately, when we do real estate photography, we got to get in and out of there in an hour, hour and a half. Um, then we can do some processing back at our office. So one of the techniques that I've been using a lot lately is one available light shot along with a blended flash shot. So it's two shots blended together in Photoshop. So here, this front picture we have here is just the available light shot. It's f6.3 um, at ISO 400 at one tenth of a second. Um, so what I try to do is just kind of balance the overall scene as best as I can. Nothing is going to be perfect with this because the dynamic range is just far too great to get in one shot. So the things that I don't like about this are the lights blowing out, especially on this wall, windows blowing out with no detail, um, the color shift is um, a little off, a little too much. We'll never be perfect because we're always mixing different uh, color temperature lights. Um, the sunlight is a different color temperature than the tungsten lighting like the overhead lights here. So uh, we have our highlights blowing out. Uh, the contrast is a little bit off, but naturally this is sort of what our eye would see, and that's what we want to try to go for in most cases when photographing real estate. So then this is the available light shot. Then what we would do is I do one flash shot. This is two lights. Um, both of these are actually camera left, and I'm exposing the flash and this exposure is 1 25th of a second f 6.3 ISO 400 and what I'm doing in this exposure is I am going for all the highlights I w I'm putting the highlights where I want them so I've got detail on the highlight on the wall I've got detail in the windows I've got t details in this overhead light so that's what I'm striving for so we have the two of them and I just kind of separated these very quickly for us just so you can see the difference. So what we're going to do is we're just going to close out that folder and then we're going to go to the folder that we're going to work with. So we're going to start again with, so I bring them in. This has been actually uh, fixed up in camera raw a little bit. Um, so actually I want to just show you, I'm, I'm not going to go into camera raw right now, but um, so the difference of the shot is this is unretouched uh, on anything not brought into camera raw. This is camera raw that's done. Um, and then so now we have the available light shot again. This is the difference between camera raw and this is no retouching. This is camera raw just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. Um, again, I'm going to close out this folder. I'm not going to go into that retouching now. It's very quickly. You just bring it in, do some spot color retouch, adjust the exposures a little bit, and get it where you want, and then um, go from there. So once I have these, um, this is our available light. And no, I'm sorry. This is our flash shot. Let's um, go ahead and... I wanted to name it, but it's not working for me. Photoshop's hanging up here. But anyways, this is our flash shot. Then there's two layers of available light. They're exactly the same, and I'll go into that. I've already added mask layers. This white mask layer here shows all. So it's showing everything. When it's black like this, it's hiding everything, so it's not showing anything. And I'm going to show you how we deal with this. So when you do that, you just go to layer, layer mask, and then you would pick reveal all or hide all. So the black is hide all, the white is reveal all. So we come here, and so what we're going to do is layer this. Um, usually what I find is if I bring it down, so this is the opacity layer, and we're going to just adjust that. So here we are, flash. Here we are, available light. So I kind of want a combination of both because, you know, especially when you're looking at like the highlight along this radiator here and things like that, the flash shot tends to be, look flashy. And I want to kind of get rid of that flashy look. 
and just kind of find a nice balance here. Um, now we're getting more towards flash. I kind of like the balance right about here, but just to show you, if we go all the way to flash, this is what we have. You know, what I don't like about the flash is we got the shadows up here. Um, shadows along this radiator are getting harsher. Some of these shadows are getting harsher. So by blending them, you're actually just kind of getting the best of both worlds. I'm finding I like it somewhere around 50%. We've got the snap that I want and things like that. Now from here, what we can do is we can also take pieces of one shot or another that we like better by using the layer masks. So by using the layer mask, we're gonna click on that. We've got to set it about 50%. We're gonna click on the mask itself. And then if we want something to show through more, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint in black. And so we I need to bring the brush size down. So there's a couple areas that I know I wanna bring in more. Um, so let's start around here, see what we got. So we know we wanna bring in the windows. We'll bring in the windows 100%. Here, I'm doing this very quickly. I might have a little bit more finesse if I, I wasn't doing a tutorial here. Um, I think I wanna bring in the um, chairs a little bit more here. So I'm going to take, and I really don't want all of it, but I want some of the snap of the flash shot in here. So we're going to come in here, and it just kind of brightens up in some of the shadows and kind of gives some snap to the wood here. Um, I think I want a little bit more. It's going to go a little bit more. Yeah, it kind of warms it up a little bit, gives a little snap here. Um, the other thing I want... That I know I want is I want this to come all the way through here. Um, actually, that's too much. I want to come back, step backwards. So I want the lamps to come through almost 100% here. What I want to do is let's bring the brush size down too much. Okay, so here we go. We're going to bring the brush size down. We're going to paint these lights in. Um, let's get it. Okay, so we've got our, this light is, we're showing all the details. The lights aren't blowing out. The other thing is, is I want these lights to show a little bit more. So we bring that in there. Um, a little too much, but we can fade that brush tool to where we want it. I think about right there is good. So we're going to hit OK. I know I want to bring some snap in from these photos on the wall. Just adds a little bit more contrast. There we go. Um, this looks good through here. And that looks pretty good. So that's what we have for this middle layer. We're going to come up to the top layer. Now this is reveal all. We're not showing anything. But there's areas I do want to kind of bring in from the available light shot and kind of give it more of that available light look. So it's just the opposite. We're going to bring our brush to white. And you know the areas that I want to bring through, so we want to click on our mask, we want to go to the paintbrush. Um, we need to turn this mask on. Paintbrush, uh, let's see, what do we want to do here? I know I want to bring in some area here this will kind of brighten up this area in the rug here, more of an available light look. Um, whoops, I don't have white going on here. We, we need to make this white, as white as white can be. So we're going to, as you can see, we can brighten this up. Let's see. Uh, okay, I don't love that, so we're going to just go back. We're going to brighten this up here, um, and then I want to go, we want to bring our brush to about 31% opacity. So that gives us highlight here in our, in our um, radiator, just a more natural look. Um, the other thing that I really wanted to fix is we've got this shadow from the flash. This is not something you normally see. This should be easy to fix. 
we are going to just bring the brush size up a little bit okay and I think opacity is good around 35 on this so we just take that and we're just gonna blend that maybe a little bit more okay it doesn't have to be completely gone but it's just um, actually I don't want that I'm gonna undo that um, but it just takes that curse of that shadow off right there and we don't really see it um, I think those were the only areas that I, I wanted to come through so now we're now we're done so we're gonna take this folder let's uh, turn it off and we're gonna turn on this folder so that's just a straight available light shot this is the finished shot straight available light finished um, so we're gonna turn off the available light this is the finish shot. This is just the flash shot, and it just looks flashy. So we have a nice balance, the best of both worlds. Um, I'm talking. I can run through this very quickly when I'm not not talking here, but we have a nice shot here to, to finish off. So what I'm going to do is just show you the last few steps that I take here. Um, I'm going to just close out this group. I'm going to delete this group, group and contents. And then we just have these three. So what we're going to do is we're going to flatten the layer so they all come together. Then we are going to layer from background so we can do edits. Otherwise, it's locked. Then we are going to crop it. My MLS happens to be the 4x5 or 8x10 format. Um, so I am automatically just going to do that. So when I'm photograph, you know, what I feel is kind of important here is uh, I kind of want to center this table. I do want to show this window that, you know, there's a lot of windows in this room. We want to see out the window. Um, we want to show it in a nice, pleasant. We're going to kind of bring that out. Um, hit enter. We are going to sit here and then we're going to fix the okay we have verticals that aren't vertical here so we're going to fix those um, very easy to do with the skew in transform so this vertical matches up with the edge here this vertical matches up with the edge here and that's good so we have that um, i'm going to hit enter we're going to crop then the last few adjustments I might do is curves. Um, I always find a nice little S curve adjustment is usually a positive thing. Not, so we're going to darken down our shadows, brighten up our highlights. And that just offers some nice snap to it. And then the other thing, I just, I just want to check our greens. Um, just wondering what happens if we adjust our greens a little bit. That's that's I don't like that, so I'm not going to do it. Um, so we're just going to leave that be. Uh, so we're going to go back to the RGB. Um, so if you notice, there's a nice little S curve here. I'm going to just bring it up here a little bit. You know, just offers a lot of snap to the photo. Done. Um, then typically, uh, I did come up a little higher than normal um, because I wanted to show the woodwork in the in the chandelier coming in. So my angle is a little higher than I normally would on this. So I'm showing a little bit more. I'm showing a little bit more um, ceiling than I normally would. So. What we can do to kind of detract from that a little bit is we'll just burn it down a little. So what that does is it will hold it holds our eye towards the center. Your eye is going to go to the lightest part. I am going to fade that a little bit. And then... Um, 
that looks good the only thing is is i find that southern yellow pine for some reason and if anybody knows the answer can sometimes look very green in mixed lighting conditions um so we're, it's going a little green down here so what i'm going to do or i'm going to try to do is i'm going to hit this i am going to hit saturation see if we can well if that's a little too much uh, we can desaturate a little bit um i just de desaturated a little too much so i'm going to bring it down just no still too much we're gonna edit undo brush um just want to take a little yellow curse out of this there we go that's fine and then the last thing i do is sharpen so we're going to go to filter sharpen i just use the unsharp mask most of the time there's several ways to sharpen this is generally somewhere around the settings that i like to use and what i'm looking for is we're, we're set right here i'm looking at this edge here and you can see i don't want it to halo as you can see here this is starting to halo so i bring it back until that halo is gone and that's going to be down in the 1.7 area. You know, it's, it's automatically going to start to halo. But I think that's good there. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And I think that's a nice sharpening effect here. Um, so there we go. All done. Um, hopefully you found this tutorial useful. And you can play around with... This will actually work in... Photoshop Pro, or you'll find that you can do this in Photoshop Elements, which is um, a much less expensive version of Photoshop. The only thing that gets a little hard sometimes is aligning layers, but if, if you shoot on a tripod and they're matched, no problems. Um, good luck.